Man Please No Contest. Phone Scam Involves Police Department, I'm Ann Ludwig. And I'm Julie Goldberg. This is Public Eye News. A Marquette man is pleading no contest or aggravated assault in Marquette County District Court. 21-year-old David Hunter entered the plea Monday morning. Hunter was arrested in April for his role in alleged assault at Coco's Restaurant in Marquette last January. Hunter will be back in court on Thursday, November 3rd for his sentencing. One person was taken to the hospital yesterday after a multi-vehicle accident in Marquette Township. The accident occurred in front of Lowe's at approximately 1.15 p.m. 21-year-old Courtney Alamy of Marquette was driving a 2004 Jeep Liberty when she pulled out of the Lowe's parking lot into the path of a Honda Element. 50-year-old Gary Vogt of Three Lights, Wisconsin was driving a Honda Element and unable to avoid collision. Vogt complained of neck pain and was taken to UP Health System Marquette for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries. Almy was cited for failure to yield. Citizens of Copper Country should be aware of a recently discovered phone scam. Someone claiming to, from Houghton um, County Police Department has called residents telling them that they are going to be arrested. An official from the police department says those, these calls have been going on for weeks. If you have received any of these calls, contact your local police. And the Houghton Volunteer Fire Department has welcomed a new face to the force, a new million dollar fire truck. This 2015 model comes equipped with 100 foot aerial and has 7,000 miles on it. To acquire the vehicle, Houghton City took out a loan through the USDA Rural Development for $462,000. The remaining balance was taken out of the city's equipment fund. The new fire truck has an estimated lifespan of 25 years. Detroit Public Schools are eligible for closure by the end of the school year if they are among the lowest performing schools statewide for the past three consecutive years, according to Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette. Schuette's opinion is at odds with an earlier legal opinion by the Miller Canfield Law Firm stating that schools within the Detroit Public Schools Community District are not eligible for closure until 2019. Governor Rick Snyder said Wednesday that he appreciates the Attorney General's opinion and that he is still reviewing it. The Miller-Canfield opinion argued that the $617 million Detroit Schools Rescue Package signed by Snyder in June created a new entity. The idea is that the rescue package hit the reset button on the district, giving it time to take advantage of additional resources and an opportunity to turn itself around academically. And members of Michigan's congressional delegation have brokered a deal to the U.S. House on board with federal funding to Flint while avoiding the possibility of a government shutdown. Under an amendment to the House's Water Resources Development Act, $170 million in infrastructure funding will be set aside for communities like Flint facing federal public health emergencies caused by contaminated drinking water. The amendment is expected to be debated on the House floor Wednesday afternoon. The U.S. Senate passed its version of the WRDA earlier this month, including $220 million for Flint and other cities dealing with contamination. The U.S. House has been hesitant to include Flint, in, Flint language in its version. And stay tuned because after the break, we'll be back with your national and international news. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. This week on UTR, it's Pontiac for a menagerie of munchables. We'll also spend a moment with the mayor and even take you to a new place where you can press your pedal to the metal. Then we head to Howell for some local radio, a speakeasy that's easy to love, and a family festival that floats. It's all coming up on Under the Radar, Michigan. Watch Thursday at 9.30, Friday at 5, and again Saturday at 10 p.m. And welcome back. Police have issued a warrant on a first-degree murder charge for an 18-year-old man who was shot four people at a party on the University of Illinois campus early Sunday morning. Officials said yesterday that they're looking for Robbie Patton and believe he is still in the area. Patton fired shots during a fight at an apartment on campus, main commercial district. In the shooting, one person, George Korchev, was killed and three others were wounded. None of the victims were directly involved in the fight. Hillary Clinton joins a old rival to try and boost her support among the younger generation. She's campaigning today in New Hampshire with Bernie Sanders. Her Republican opponent, Donald Trump, is making several stops in the Midwest. CBS Craig Boswell has the latest from the White House. 
Donald Trump courted Polish Americans during a morning campaign stop in Chicago. The Polish people are great people. The Trump administration will be a true friend to Poland and to all Polish Americans. Hillary Clinton is in New Hampshire this afternoon for a joint appearance with former Democratic rival Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Clinton's emails were again the focus of a hearing on Capitol Hill, where FBI Director James Comey defended his decision not to prosecute her for mishandling classified email while she was Secretary of State. If anybody else had done this, like a soldier or a serviceman who did virtually the same thing, uh, they would have been prosecuted and were but not Hillary Clinton, and that's a double standard. They'd be disciplined. They'd be in big trouble in the FBI. If you did this, you would not be prosecuted. That wouldn't be fair. The campaigns for Clinton and Trump are still spinning Monday night's debate and dealing with some of the fallout. For Trump, the fallout continued after he commented Tuesday about a former Miss Universe. He said Alicia Machado gained a massive amount of weight and that it was a real problem. What we've never seen before, really, is a presidential nominee with some regularity attacking private citizens. Trump has rallies today in Iowa and Wisconsin. Greg Boswell, CBS News, the White House. The Senate has rejected pres pres President Barack Obama's veto of legislation that will allow the families of September 11th victims to sue Saudi Arabia for the kingdom's alleged backing of the attackers. The senators voted 97 to 1 to override Obama's decision to shuttle the bill. The override vote came even as the president and top military officials were warned that the measure could put U.S. troops and interests at risk. A House vote is expected later today, and the House also overrides the bill becomes a law. Former Israeli leader Shimon Peres has died in Tel Aviv two weeks after suffering a massive stroke. The 93-year-old is being remembered as a true visionary and a man of prince and pr peace and principle. Terry Okia is in London with more on the tribute to Peres. Israeli leaders held a moment of silence to mourn the passing of one of their country's founding fathers, Shimon Peres. As Israel's president, Shimon did so much to unite the nation and the nation loved him for it. The 93-year-old statesman suffered a stroke earlier this month and died at a Tel Aviv hospital Wednesday, surrounded by his family. With deep sorrow, we bid farewell to our beloved father. His storied career spanned more than half a century. Paris held nearly every senior political office in Israel, including president and prime minister. In 1994, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for his role in brokering the Oslo Accords, a historic peace deal between Israelis and Palestinians. Former President Bill Clinton, who hosted the two sides at the White House, says Perez was a genius with a big heart, a lucid, eloquent dreamer until the very end. A comprehensive peace, peace for all. Workers are preparing a grave for Perez, who will be laid to rest on Friday. The public will have a chance to pay final respects on Thursday, when the former president's body lies in state at Israel's parliament in Jerusalem. Terry Okita, CBS News, London. Anheuser-Busch is set to pay $6 million to quiet allegations that it paid off Indian government officials to boost sales. The company also admitted to hushed employee who spoke out about the issue. The Securities and Exchange Commission said that the company used third-party sales promoters to make payment in violation to the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, which was indicated to prevent bribery. According to the settlement, the company must show corporate with the SEC for two years and notify former employees that they are allowed to contact the SEC about possible violations. And after the break, we'll be back with your weather and sports. the Schönbrunn Palace Gardens in Vienna, where we'll waltz to Strauss with the wonderful Vienna Philharmonic. Mostly, we'll enjoy the sounds of French music by Bizet, Poulenc, Offenbach, and Ravel. Join maestro Simeon Bichkov and acclaimed piano duo sisters Katya and Marielle Lebec for this magnificent Vienna Philharmonic Summer Night Concert 2016 on great performances. Friday at 9 after Charlie Rose The Week on Public TV 13. And welcome back to Public Eye News. I'm Ann Ludwig. As you can see behind me, it is cloudy, so you might want to grab a coat if you're planning on going outside. Our current conditions, it is cloudy with a temperature of 62. Winds are northeast at 11 miles per hour, and the pressure is 30.11 and rising. 
Tonight we're looking at partly cloudy, a low of 53, the winds north at 8 miles per hour. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, um, high of 65, and the winds north at 9 miles per hour. Looking across the UP, it is 64 and partly sunny in Sault Ste. Marie, 60 in Manistique and cloudy, 61 in Escanaba and partly sunny, 60 in Menom or I'm sorry, yeah, Menominee and cloudy. Um, 60 in Iron Mountain and partly sunny, 55 in Iron Mountain and cloudy, 60 in Houghton and cloudy, and here in Marquette, 57 in cloudy. Let's take a look at your weather ahead. On Friday, a high of 65, low of 54 and sunny. Saturday, a high of 61, low of 54 and rainy. And Sunday, a high of 62, low of 53, and we're also looking some, at some rain. So on Friday, we're having some awesome weather, and I hear we also have some great news for the Michigan, um, Northern Michigan volleyball team. Yeah, I'm gonna say, home opener was last night, and they pulled out a pretty good win against Michigan Tech. The Northern Michigan volleyball team rallied from a 2-0 deficit to top rival Michigan Tech in five sets last night at Vandermint Arena in its home opener. The Wildcats sealed their comeback victory by winning the fifth set 15-12. In that set, after the Huskies pulled within a single point at 10-9, Bridget Bustle posted her 19th kill of the match to regain a two-point cushion and to swing momentum back in NMU's favor. Marta Fraga Gunten, who posted four of her seven kills in the final frame, scored the final point of the match, sending the ball just over a block and into empty space. Megan Dahl, Fraga Gunten, and Autumn Monsma reached the double digits in digs. Jamie Hoboom recorded 57 assists. It was her fifth 50 assist effort this season and the ninth of her career. NMU, who is now nine and six on the season, welcomes Wayne State Friday at two. It's not the quality of his pitches that stand out about Michael Fulmer, although the pitches are impressive. It's the calm, professional way the rookie right-hander goes about his work. That work will be on display tonight when he pitches for the Tigers against the Cleveland Indians. Fulmer currently has the lowest ERA in the league, and if he can keep his runs allowed down tonight, he could become the first rookie to win the ERA title since the Tigers' Mark Friedrich in 1976. The Indians have already clinched the AL Central and are unsure of who exactly will throw tonight. But if anything is sure for the division leaders, they will rest Corey Kluber and be sure to so that he can start the first playoff game. The Tigers were powered to a shutout win last night at the hands of Justin Verlander, and they'll get a chance to take the lead in the series tonight at Comerica Park. Ha Ha Clinton Dix turns on his TV and every day he sees a reminder after a reminder of the important reason he continues to pursue his degree in criminal justice from the University of Alabama. Ferguson, Baltimore, Dallas, Milwaukee, Tulsa, Charlotte, the cities change, the violence and the frustration do not. Born Hashan Treshawn Clinton Dix and nicknamed Ha Ha by his grandmother, Clinton Dix grew up in Eatonville, one of the first incorporated black cities in the country in 1887 following the Emancipation Proclamation, just seven miles north of Orlando. His life experiences have led him at a young age to aspire to be an officer of the law, and while he had his eye on graduating in the, the fall of 2017, he has put off classes to focus on football this fall. Well, and I'll say, his name might be Ha Ha, but he is definitely a force to be reckoned with on the field. But I hear some Donald Trump fans are getting a little bit of a ha-ha today. That's right, Dan. The jokes about the Republican presidential nominee have multiplied by the day, and so has his use of likeness. A Washington state trooper um, pulled over a driver Tuesday who was using a cutout of Donald Trump's head to drive a carpool lane. As the officer wrote the $136 ticket, another trooper tweeted a photo of the incident. Well, that's Donald Trump's head. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that's a pretty that's a pretty schemey way to get out of the carpool lane. Yeah. But that's all the time we have for you today here at Public Eye News. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow. The preceding program was produced in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television.